scripture today comes from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 18. The Lord speaks. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were the, its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind the doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness. When I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place. When I said, this far you may come and no farther. Here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever been given orders to the morning or shown its dawn in place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake all the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light and the and their upraised raised arms is broken. If you have journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep, have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of earth? Tell me if you know all this. It's the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Now, if you are of a certain age, you are going to be able to finish this jingle. You ready? Da 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 and talking about how all of these are a retelling of the Christ story. <coughs> now, Batman is in the DC comic world, right? And Batman is an interesting superhero because Batman has done it all himself, basically. All right? He's the one, and he doesn't have any superpowers. In the latest DC <coughs> movie, uh, the youngest hero comes bouncing into the car, looks over at Bruce Wayne, and says, so what is your superpower? And he glances back and says, I'm rich. <laughs> okay, so, you know, the alter ego Bruce Wayne is wealthy, and he has uh, all this money, and he can do what he needs to, and so he has designed this car, and he's designed his outfit, and he's the one that keeps himself in shape, and he's the one who's gone to school, and so he's smarter than everybody else, and he's sort of a self-made hero. He hasn't been... Uh, he hasn't been bitten by a spider. Uh, he's not from outer space. Any of those things. He's, you know, just a guy who decided this is what I'm going to do. Now that's the Marvel universe. If you're, oops, that's the DC universe. Now if you're in the Marvel universe, the self-made hero is Iron Man. Okay? And Iron Man's um, alter ego is Tony Stark. And Tony Stark is also very wealthy. And Tony Stark is smart, and he knows what to do, and he's designed all these things, and he designed a little battery that runs everything, and he designed his own armor, and he's figured out that this is what he's going to do. And so both of these characters, both from the DC Universe and the Marvel Universe, they would be the sort of character that, you know, nothing happened to them. They didn't get zapped with gamma radiation or, you know, whatever it is that happens to all the other superheroes. These are just a couple of guys who made up their minds, this is what we're going to do. But the thing about those two is, especially the fact that they're wealthy, they, they sort of bring this attitude with them, well, I'm a self-made man. In their case, I'm a self-made superhero. Now, first of all, all of us know that that's nonsense. Anybody who pays attention to either of these comic work worlds understands perfectly well. Bruce Wayne did not make all that money to start with. He inherited it. 
So he is not a self-made wealthy man. All right? His father, now, it's not to say he hasn't worked hard. He has. He's taken all that money, made more money. But he is not a self-made man, at least in terms of his wealth. Tony Stark in the Marvel Universe, same way. You know, he inherited the money from his father. And he's made a lot more of it. I'm not denying he's a business. He sells arms, as a matter of fact. But he's made a lot more money. But he also is not a self-made man. Most of the time when we're talking about, or what I've said so far is when we talk about these superhero stories, what we're doing is telling the Christ story. But when we begin to get to the characters like Batman and Iron Man, then we're beginning to evolve out of the Christ story into our story. Because Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark both think, well, I'm self-made. Well, I, that's absolute nonsense. Neither one of them can actually get dressed without help. <laughs> you know, Batman has to slide down a pole, and we never have seen how that works, but there he is. And if you've ever seen the first of the Iron Man movies, there's this great scene, because Tony has programmed the computer to try and get his armor on and off of him. And so after his first flight, he comes in, and the computer has him dangling, the robot has him dangling, and is trying to get all this stuff off him, and it can't do it, you know, ouch. And, and in walks the girlfriend, you know, and here is hanging in this machine trying to take all this stuff. Said, well, this isn't the worst thing you've ever caught me doing. <laughs> well, I'm a self-made man. You can't even get dressed by yourself. Get a grip on reality. And in all the time I've been watching both DC and Marvel uh, movies, I will confess I don't read the comic books, but I've never heard anybody who has read the comic books ever talk about the fact that either one of these characters plowed a field and planted wheat. <laughs> I have never heard that either one of them kept a vegetable garden. And in fact, I've never seen either one of them milk a cow. <laughs> so somebody else is doing the food in this department, aren't they? A self-made man. Oh, yeah? The closest I ever saw Tony Stark get to a cow was if somebody in one of the movies asking if he'd repair the tractor. And that's as close as it came. I'm like that. I don't have a vegetable garden. And I've never planted wheat. And I've never milked a cow. I rely on somebody. I have to go to the grocery store for this sort of thing. And that means I rely on somebody not only who's planting wheat and baking bread and uh, doing the milk, but also a trucker who's getting that stuff to the grocery store. I'm also relying on some official somewhere down the line to inspect that stuff so that it doesn't have E. coli or any of the other noxious things that could poison. <coughs> I'm a self-made man. No, you're not. That's rubbish. Didn't make my own clothes. Actually, I'm kind of afraid to look uh, at my nice red, white, and blue vest that may be made in China. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't do it myself. And these superheroes, Batman and Iron Man, they don't have super, super powers. They're smart, and they're rich, and they've kept themselves in shape. But the reality is, this whole attitude of, oh, I'm a self-made superhero, that's nonsense. The reading from the book of Job today is a part of the Job story. The Job story is really a very sad story, because the book of Job starts out in the first two chapters. In the first two chapters, um, Satan teases God. Well, of course, he's a righteous man. Who wouldn't be righteous? He's got fields. He's got money. He's got food in the barn. He's got 12 kids. He's wealthy all over the place. Who wouldn't worship you because of that? And Satan successfully teases God so that God gives permission. I'm right. Go do whatever. Just don't kill him. And so all of that, all of those barns burned down, all of the crops are destroyed, and all 12 children die. And Job himself then is struck down with a disease that's contagious enough that he leaves the house and goes and sits out on the dustbin. Well, in America, that would be the garbage pile. And for the next 40-odd chapters, in the book of Job, 
There are three friends who come and sit with him in silence for 40 days. Now, that's a real friend who will come and just sit with you for 40 days and not say anything. But starting in chapter 3, they begin to talk. And the conversation is all centered around the question that all of us ask the most. Why do bad things happen to good people? And for a good 36 chapters, they debate all kinds of theories. Well, this is why it happens. This is why it happens. This is why it happens. And Tiny Job's got nothing to say. Enough of this. It is not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything to deserve this. I was doing everything right. And so Job silences his friends and finally begins to call out God. He says, you come down here and you tell me why this is happening. I don't deserve this. And then the scripture lesson we heard is the beginning of God's reply. It goes on to three more chapters. But it's the beginning of God's reply. And basically, <laughs> God is saying, ah, uh, okay, well, you just, it's interesting. Get dressed is the first thing. Get dressed. You know, King James Version, don't you know? Gird up your loins like a man. Okay? <laughs> Get dressed and come out here and talk to me. At least Job could dress himself. Get dressed and come out here and talk to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Do you know their measurements? Do you know how I did it? Where were you when I set the uh, boundaries for the oceans? Were you there? Do you know how I did that? Where were you? Where are you every morning? Every morning you get up, don't you? And you tell the sun to get on with it, don't you? And if you go reading on and joke, God gets more and more and more sarcastic. Where were you when I did all these things? And the point is that God is replying to Job and says, Job, you don't even understand the good things, much less can you understand the bad things. We have a sense of that, don't we? We've never gotten down to the foundations of the earth. Even now, all we have are movies that think about getting to the center of the earth. And we aren't really sure where those oceans are going to end up. You know, there's a lot of debate. Those oceans are going to go somewhere. Have they reached their limits or are there new limits? We can't even figure that part out. None of us can figure out what it is that certain times pregnancy happens and life happens and certain times it doesn't. And none of us knows when our death is going to come. None of us understands the good things, much less the bad things. The problem with a superhero like Batman or like Iron Man is this whole attitude of, well, I'm a self-made superhero. I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made person. And that attitude tends to creep into us, too. Ah, well, I did this all myself. I'm a self-made person. I went to school and I studied hard. I did all that work and I earned this. This is me, me, me. It's a very fine line. Because on the one hand, yeah, there's personal responsibility. But on the other hand, there's this, well, I'm a self-made superhero, which is called self-righteousness. And that's sin. Self-righteousness is the one that says, I don't need anybody else. And that's pure rubbish. My guess is none of us here can make the, our own tires for our cars, can we? My guess is that none of us have the skill to make our glasses or our contacts. My guess is that if you have chest pain and go down, what are you going to do on your phone? 911 in hopes that somebody's going to come running. Now, some of you have, compu uh, have computer skills. I get that. But I don't think anybody in here invented the Internet. And sure, you went to school. But there was a teacher 
who taught you. There was more than one teacher who taught you. And they taught you how to read, and they taught you how to write, and they taught you how to do some arithmetic so that, yeah, you can keep up with the money you earn, and sure, you can fill out a job application, and absolutely, you can read a book and get to be an expert on whatever it is you're an expert in. But did you do it all yourself? Absolutely not. Batman and Iron Man may be self-made superheroes. But they tread that line because on one hand, I'm a self-made man. No, you're not. You inherited that money. And you didn't order that body. It was given to you. And on the other hand, they made this decision, for better or for worse, They've made this decision that since I have these gifts, I'm going to use them for the sake of someone else. And that's called personal responsibility. I'm a self-made superhero. <laughs> that is not the attitude of the people of God. The people of God have a different attitude. We have an attitude of humility. I didn't make my hands, I didn't make my feet, I didn't make my eyes. Someone had to teach me. Someone had to support me. Someone's going to care for me when the time comes. And all of that is not because I did it myself, I'm a self-made hero. All of that is a spirit of humility that comes to God even in the bad times and says, I don't understand. I don't understand the bad things that are happening to me, but then of course, Lord, I don't understand the good things that are happening to me either. So that the people of God don't come with an attitude of, well, I'm a self-made superhero. We come with an attitude of humility and thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you, God, for the life that was breathed into me. Thank you, God, that there are people out there who understand about food and clothing. Thank you, God, that there are people out there who can repair air conditioners. <laughs> Thank you, God, that there are people out there that I'm connected to. Let me do my part. <clears throat> Batman and Iron Man are fun. They're those sort of self-made, I did it myself heroes. But when we talk about the people of God, that's not our attitude. Our attitude is humility in the face of God. Because we don't understand the bad things that happen to us, nor do we understand the blessings that are showered upon us. And a thankful heart. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.